church. Welcome to everyone who's here and everyone who's watching online. I hope we all had a good week. And we are keen to come together and meet once again. I think we're going to start off with some music from the band. So let's get excited for that. I'll pass it up. Thanks, Connor. It's good having Connor. A bit of fresh blood right up the front, yeah? It's good, yeah? <laughs> Well, he's, he's, he, uh, he got practice on youth group on Friday night. He's been running youth group. So, good on you, mate. Anyone else can do it if they want to. If anyone wants to come up and have a go, they can come up and run through what's going on. We can put you on the roster. Come and see me after, yeah? Or not. <laughs> How about we start with worship, eh? Yeah. Yeah, more excited about that. Okay. Let's stand and sing. Open the eyes of my heart. or uh, uh, just can't get out of bed. We just pray for your blessing, your, the presence of your Holy Spirit with them to uh, support them, to uh, give them help, give them uh, strength to, uh, to get through what they are going through at the moment. We just thank you, Lord, that we can gather together today. Wherever we are, we know that your Spirit unites us. And so we unite together this morning in your name. Amen. So a few people sick, Mike and Julie, and now Tegan, are all have COVID. So they're all, which is why they're not here. Um, I think Phil is still has COVID in his isolation somewhere in Australia. I'm not sure if he's back home yet. Today? Okay, no worries. So they're coming home today. So there's a few, that, that was, for, uh, I think, from being away for on their trip. This is that trip that keeps on giving, unfortunately. So they're... Um, they send their greetings and say hi, wish they could be here. So that's why I'm up this morning. Mike was supposed to be leading. So we've had a shuffle round of people doing things this morning at the last minute. So anyway, we're here together. They send their regards and we'll continue on with worship. I just wanted to just fill you in. That's, that's where Mike and Julie and Tegan are, okay? This is my revelation. 
Thanks for that. That was good songs. All right, we got some time for some announcements. So what have we got, Joel? Prayer, what we do every week. We got prayer on Zoom, Mondays and Wednesdays, 7 p.m. And in person on Fridays. I don't know if that's going to happen because Mike has COVID, but <laughs> we'll see. Get to those if you're keen. What else have we got? Our Bible reading of Psalms. We got bookmarks up the back. This is for July, but we're almost finished with July. I'm not sure what we're doing for next month, but more there's book the more of the same? We more Psalms. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> August, obviously, after <laughs> July. Good stuff. What's next? Tribe Youth. Yeah. We <laughs> like this one. <laughs> I know about this one. <laughs> We started back just this past Friday, had our first week with The Gathering. Got a lot of cool nights coming up this term. And the next slide should be next week's one, Arcade Night. Good fun. <laughs> if you are your 6 to 12 age, get there. And if you know someone your 6 to 12 age, invite them. It's going to be lots of fun. What else have we got? We got our intergenerate engage 
thingamajig. <laughs> I'm not too sure what this is, but that is coming up real soon, the 4th of August. If you have any questions, ask Deb. Yep, got it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> what other slides have we got? Soul Sisters Retreat. That writing is very small. I'm going to look on the side here. Friday the 5th to Saturday the 6th of August, also coming up very soon. RSVP to Julie by the 31st of July. So that's also quite soon. Get on that if you're keen to go. <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> and we have this slide, which is for the police support person training night. Which is tomorrow night. I don't know if you can still RSVP, but yeah, you can. can. You just turn up. Awesome. So this is a cool opportunity to be a support person in police situations. <laughs> <laughs> situations where people need an adult person to help be with them and represent them is, I think, the situation. <laughs> But yeah, that's a cool opportunity. If you're interested, there's information down the bottom. Get on that. It's tomorrow night. <laughs> Do we have more slides? Ah, the baby. <laughs> Judah Zion Sargent, born 18th of July, 2022. So this is obviously Pete and Bree's new baby boy. He's very cute. And that... That's a little sign, I'm pretty sure, that the nurses made for him in, in the hospital. Very cute. Can't wait to meet him. It looks like lots of fun. <laughs> very, very cute. And that's it. We made it through announcements. Good stuff. I'm going to pass it back to the board. Good stuff. That's like thinking on your feet, Connor. Well done. <laughs> So you can imagine Mike and Julie's frustration that they are isolated and can't see their first grandchild. So thoughts for them, right? They all uh, they have to be isolated from him. And so that's frustrating. So thoughts are with them for that as well. Okay. Connor, you did a really good job, eh? That's <clears throat> I'm impressed. It's a, it's a hard thing to stand up here and talk to people and just especially when you don't know what's actually going on. So that was a really good job. We're going to stand and continue worship. We're coming in towards communion. Chris Brady's going to lead us around the communion table after these songs. So let's stand and Lorraine's going to lead this song for us. So looking forward to that.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our time of communion. So I'd like to just start today by reading a selection of verses from the Psalms that we've been going through. How good has it been? It's been such a good thing for us as a couple. So many truths reinforced each and every day. So I'm reading um, from Psalm 95 and 100. Uh, just a few verses. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is God. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Well, we certainly have done that this morning. We have come physically together into this building. Um, and if you're at home, you've come to a device and you're joining us that way, so that's good. And we have worshipped the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with our voices. You know, so many of our songs that we sing start with the word come or have come in it. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. Come, let us sing of a wonderful love. That's an old one. Some of our Christmas carols. Oh, come, let us, let us adore him. Oh, come, all ye faithful. You know, many years ago in our churches, when we talked about communion, we talked about coming to the table, coming around the Lord's table. It was the Lord's Supper and we came. So, you know, the invitation this morning and from the Saviour is always, always to come, to come near and approach him. And that's what we're doing now in a bit of a deeper way when we take communion and remember his sacrifice for us. Now, maybe you come this morning very eager, almost running to the cross, ready to spend these few moments in deep, thankful communion with the Father and with the Son. Or maybe, just maybe, for you today, for any number of reasons, it's not so easy to come and it's a bit of a struggle to come near. But we should come. We need to come. He is worthy of our thankfulness. And just listen to the promises he gives us as we do come near. So I'm reading from Matthew 11, 28. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And then John 6, 35. I am the bread of life. Um, Ed spoke to us about that great I am a few weeks ago. Whoever... Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Of course, Jesus is not talking here about physical hunger and thirst, but a satisfying food for our souls. His promises are absolutely trustworthy. And as we come, he gives, and he gives abundantly. So we're going to listen to a um, song now um, that features that word, come. It's by Colin Buchanan and it's been written for children and it's very easy to pick up on, um, even for non-singers, unlike some of us, um, it's very easy to catch on to. So I'd encourage you to sing along if, you, if that's comfortable for you. Uh, the words will be on screen, but if you just want to sit and listen to the words and watch the screen, that's fine too. Um, you can take the bread and cup during the song or um, you can take it just after. And then I'll finish with a word of prayer.
Father, we're so grateful that you sent your son for us. We're so grateful too that he was obedient and he came and bore the cross for us. And so we've come this morning, Father. You love it when we come to you. We thank you that you came to us and now we uh, remember that incredible sacrifice so father we thank you that through the cross we become new doesn't matter what we've done where we've been what's happened it's a clean slate and so father when we are struggling we thank you that we come to the cross and we're renewed and we're refreshed in the goodness of your grace and mercy and love that was so amazingly expressed on Calvary. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. So 
So we continue in worship now, I guess, as we, um, as we come to um, the time of offering. If you've come prepared this morning, there's some baskets up the back there. And um, for those that give electronically, um, that's wonderful. Um, thank you for that. Just let me pray over the offering now um, for these monies to be distributed. Father, we thank you for your generosity. You are a God that gives and gives and gives. And you, we can never outgive you. And so, Father, it's a privilege and an honour to give just something small back to you. And we pray for those who will administer these monies that it will be for your glory and the uplifting of your name. Um, we thank you, Father, for all we have. We know that we are amazingly blessed. And we thank you that um, you just are a generous and giving God. Uh, we pray now that we will have attentive ears open hearts for what you have for us because we have the promise, another promise that says when your word goes out, it never comes back empty. So we look expectantly to what you're going to do in our lives now. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, unexpectedly, here I am. Uh, at least I'm retired, so that helps when it comes to preparation. So it's, I'm really thrilled to be able to share with you this morning. And uh, I, what sort of things have touched your heart already as you've sung or worshipped in communion, given an offering uh, in your heart? Uh, what sort of thing has anything touched your heart in a special way? It's, it's good to reflect on what really touches us so that we can stop. This is one of the great things we can do on Sunday morning. We stop to say, Lord, you're here and yeah, it's great to listen and to come and, and experience something fresh or something new. Uh, when it comes to that line in the song, all of heaven held its breath, I think, oh, imagine, try to imagine heaven. All, it's that, that, just so amazing. And so cheering and be beautiful when he rose from the dead to conquer all of those evil things and the rotten things that hurt and destroy. So things in the, in the service that, that where God can touch you and say, yeah, I'm coming, Lord. It, it, that's a simple thing just to do. Anytime, all the time. So we're sharing today a little bit more in uh, the I Am series. So I'm going to read from John chapter 8 and from verse 48. This is towards the end of, of, the, uh, of this chapter and this sort of season that John's recording. And it's sort of all before that has been this bread of life and light of the world. And yeah, that, that most people really enjoyed that sort of thing that they were the people listening at the, on, during the day of Jesus. They, they were happy with that. But uh, now in here, whoa, the whole atmosphere changes with the audience, these Jewish people, strongly religious. But let's see at the end of it because it's a whole lot of ebb and flow of tensions and and statements and questions and protests and so we're going to try and navigate a few of those uh, in the while we've got this morning so Luke uh, John chapter 8 from verse 48 the Jews answered him aren't we right in saying that you're a Samaritan and demon possessed that would have been the 
most insulting thing you could say to a fellow Jew. You're a Samaritan, we hate them, don't want to go near them, and demon-possessed, that raises it to another level altogether. Jesus replied, I'm not possessed by a demon, but I honour my father, and you dishonour me. I'm, but there is one who seeks it, and he's the judge. I tell you the truth, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. At this the Jews exclaimed, Now we know that you're demon-possessed. Abraham died, and so do the prophets. Yet you say that if anyone keeps your word, he will, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? You said I did not. I would be, if I said I did not, you would be, I would be a liar to you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father, Ham, Abraham, rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. Oh, you're not yet 50 years old, the Jews said to him. And you've seen Abraham? Come on, get real. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered. Before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. So incredible events were happening around Jesus. He's, he's saying, I'm, I'm God in a human form. And of course, that was terrible. That, that was blasphemy. That was about the worst sin. That's why they said he was demon-possessed. And Yeah. So it's, it was a big sort of change of thinking for the disciples to, and, and also for the crowds generally to try and get their heads around this thing that this human being is saying, I'm God. I'm divine. So we, we come because we believe it. And I think more and more today, we need to be answering the question, why do I believe? Why? What are the reasons? So one of the reasons that I think is, in, is a wonderful reading, I, this, uh, you know, the Psalms were bread of life this week, and uh, recently Jan and I reading this, uh, one of the chapters in Tom, uh, Timothy Keller's book, The Reason for God. Uh, and uh, he, in, this pa in this book, he gives some stories and this is one of the reasons why I love stories of people who come to Christ. I'm sure you do too. So they're good for me to feed on. It's, it's like the bread that lasts forever, isn't it? So here I'd like you to uh, just have this story because it's one of the reasons why we believe. It's because people's lives are being changed all around us. He, uh, Timothy Keller went to New York uh, City uh, probably about 20 or 30 years ago and um, all of the all of his uh, co-workers and whatever no don't don't do that can't build a church in in New York in Manhattan that they're all secular they're all climbing the ladders to Wall Street or wherever to write big have big money and, and be a great success so don't go there 20 years later 5,000 people in one location and there are more groups in other locations around New York where Timothy Keller has uh, planted churches. So God has really blessed him and here's one of the stories. Jeffrey was a New York City musician raised in a conservative Jewish home. Both his father and mother suffered terribly with cancer, his mother succumbing to it. Because of a variety of physical ailments from his youth, he took up the practice of Chinese healing arts along with Taoist and Buddhist meditation and became extremely focused on physical wellness. Great word these days, isn't it? Wellness. He was in no state of spiritual need when a friend began to ask him to come to church. He liked the sermons until that Jesus business came around at the end at which point he'd stopped listening, 
Soon, however, he became somewhat jealous of his Christian friends, joy and hope for the future, which he had not encountered before. Then he began listening to the ends of the sermons and realising they posed an intellectual challenge that he'd not wanted to face. Finally, to his surprise, during his time of meditation, he discovered his moments of normally pure quiet and stillness were constantly interrupted by visions of Jesus on the cross. He began to pray to the Christian God and soon he realised that his dominant life narrative had been the escape and total avoidance of suffering. Now he saw how futile such a life goal was when he understood that Jesus had surrendered his physical health and life to save the world and him, it moved him deeply. He saw a way to get the courage to face the inevitable suffering, a way to get suffering for, of the future and to know that there would be a path through it. He embraced the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yay, what a great story that one is for us to, to, to read and to, to just draw on it and to feed on it, to build us up. And so today we're talking about the, this, the I am is not a, I am the bread of life, I am the light. It's just before Abraham was, I am. So I've asked the question, where the rubber hits the road for traction? just to try to get a picture in our minds. How it's, uh, and I remember very vividly on the farm growing up in, a, in Queensland where it was black dirt and if you've got a lot of rain, don't try and drive anything over it because the wheels just spin, 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 spin. You're not going to get anywhere. No traction happening there. So it's, it's important for us in our spiritual life to know what God is saying to us so that so that we, we can, we can because the rubber does hit the road. We, we're living life. We, we talk, we act, uh, we do all sorts of things, activities. So that's where our rubber hits the road. So what, what's, what's that doing? What, what are we doing about how that impacts others and how it influences what they do and say? So that's why I really think it's great that the church is, is embracing this idea of intergenerational ministry. Uh, I, I, I sometimes have a real, you know, deep thing in my heart, the kids that are being born now or children going to school and pr uh, preschool, primary and whatever, the, the influences of the world are just bashing on their ears constantly and... Uh, trying to convince them, yeah, if you do this little thing, you'll avoid suffering, you'll avoid pain, because it's all about trying to be happy, trying to be pl have pleasure in your life. And so it's important for us, I think, to think, well, where do I fit in this? Uh, do I relate better to the preschool or to the primary age or to high school or uh, young adults? Or, or person of any age. Am I, am I open? How is God calling me to be intergenerational uh, in this season? Because unless we pass it on well, then we, we're just dying out. And the secular world, they've been quite happy with that, they think, um, for Christianity just to, be, just to gradually die. So what we need to be doing, and I'm, I, I, it really dawned on me yesterday talking to... to someone I'd met for the first time who's a Christian. And I, we're referring to the fact that the census has shown that less and less people are identifying as Christian, whatever brand. So somebody is not passing it on. And I look at my own family. There's a couple of grandchildren. Uh, very, very dodgy at the moment. And it's, it's, some, it's, it's fuel for prayer, obviously. So it's up to us today to be thinking, how can I pass this on? Uh, it's, 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 there's a legacy to be having for us to leave 
uh, the, the older we get. And so we need to be thinking about these relationships, praying for a family in the church that you might, God might lay on your heart. Look at the, the husband, the wife, or the mother and father and the children. Pray for them by name. Do something very concrete. Let the rubber hit the road in, in thinking about how you're going to touch people within the family of God and then beyond outside as well. What age do you best relate to? What's at stake? Well, it's, it's, it's big things. It's big chips. It's death or life. And it's something that we find it probably hard to really get to terms with. That the lovely friends that most of us probably have who are not Christian are not really going to heaven. How do you come to terms with that? You know, we hear on the news, uh, on the news as we're coming down, another murder, probably domestic violence by the sound of it. And th so there's these tragedies happening in our society culturally because... People are not finding answers. They're not understanding what God is saying. They're not listening. So it's important for us to, to try to grasp from this passage in, in John 8 that it's not an uncommon thing for people to just switch off, don't want to listen, or that story where the guy just didn't, when it got to the Jesus stuff, forget it. Um, it it's something that we need to be praying into and working out how best we can encourage people to see why is there's every good reason in the world to find a place of safety, security, eternal life, wellness, beautiful wellness that God wants us to have. So John continues to build his case of explaining who Jesus is, that it is God himself. There's all power. All love and all authority. And of course the people of, the, of his day in the Jewish culture, they, what, what's this all about? Who, who is this person? Who do you think you are? And Jesus could reply, I, I know my father and he knows me. And you don't know him. This is a huge, huge claim that we read a moment ago. Before Abraham was, I am. So the present, that is the present, Jesus is. He'll always be the same yesterday, today, forever. So we have that confidence to trust that he is who he said he is. And as we've said, there's the tension starts building. I don't want to hear this, some of these Jewish people, in their hearts. We, we, we don't want to hear this. Um... And so there's, then Jesus gives answers. Uh, they, they, they usually don't like the answer uh, because on one occasion he, he, he was saying to them, well, if you think I'm demon-possessed or something, am I a sinner? Can you, can you point to anything in my life that's sinful? I'm not going to ask myself that question, thanks very much. Uh, I don't want to go there because I know I've sinned. I know I'm a sinner. I've not trusted God every step and every, every attitude, every thought, every action. But Jesus could say it. And it rang true to those listening to him. It was a huge claim to make as he faced these people. So we're going to look at, at the battles that, that we face. And ev even people who are not yet Christian. They'll have to face battles as well. It's the battle for spirit to understand that we are in a spiritual realm as well as this physical earth that we can, we can see around us. And the battle is also for truth and obedience. That's going to be a big one for Christians in the future. It, it, to really stand up for truth and others disagree with you. Uh, some will get angry and there'll be tension. Uh, if, if you don't look to be inclusive or you, you look as if you're, uh, you're, you're causing some sort of discrimination against particular groups or peoples or whatever. So there can be, that could be a great challenge even now for many. And then, of course, the battle for the heart. 
God always wants to centre on this battle as the key decision time of our lives. Does he have my heart, the deepest part of me, my soul? There used to be so much talk in the church about caring for souls. That's caring for the deepest part, the heart. And that's why we come to Jesus. Because nobody satisfies like Jesus as far as when it comes to having a satisfied heart. Because a satisfied heart centred on him, everything sort of comes together and makes better sense as we look at the world around us. So that's important for us to grasp that the battle is for us in this spiritual realm. And it's so easy to, to neglect it when there's so much practical stuff we have to do uh, each day, get meals, do you know, a job or whatever uh, we're doing in our lives. To remember there is a spiritual realm. Jesus said, I'm from above, you are from below. Very clear distinction between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil or the kingdom of sin. The kingdom of God reflected in people's lives, expressed mainly through Jesus, was truth and grace, beauty, unity, life eternal. That's, that's the essence I become a unified person because I know about my sin and I've confessed it, I'm made whole in Christ, restored, renewed, and, and ready, ready to, to, to love to, to be in heaven with him. So it's our, our choice. With, whereas with the, the devil, there's the lies, the pride, the disunity, or fragmentation, and ultimately death. What a tragic end. Jesus says in this passage there is one who judges. So it's not a, not a nice topic to introduce to anybody but it's, it's, it's a reality that there is a kingdom of God, of righteousness and, and there is a kingdom of the devil which is sin and just pieces get in the people's lives just get scattered everywhere. They don't know how to make sense of this guy in, in the story. Tried to make sense. He couldn't make sense of suffering. Tried to avoid it all. But it was real. So he had to face it eventually. And most people that we talk to, there'll be times in their lives that maybe they will need to see the importance of facing the, the, the problems of, of suffering. So why, what do we believe and why do we believe? And it's a daily choice, day after day. In when I open my mouth to speak, what comes out of my heart? When I do have some action, what, well, how does that reflect what's in my heart? Has God really got my heart? So I come to him again and trust him in that situation. The Jewish people were enslaved to religion 2,000 years ago. That was their belief system. That was their culture. And they trusted big names like Abraham. He, he, he's the father of the nations and even Moses with the Ten Commandments. They were big names then. And you call on those people. And, 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 and so these, these Jewish people, biologically, they could tick the Abraham box quite easily. Yep, we've been descended from Abraham tracing back all of the generations of the ancestors so that's how they live their lives we're his kids aren't we? we we're Abraham's kids and Jesus challenges that belief and then of course tension will rise won't it? If, if, if this is their foundation of what they believe, we're Abraham's kids, we're okay with God. And Jesus says, you know, are you really sure about that? Are you really sure? And so we need to understand that uh, as much as we possibly can, that was the context then, 
what is the context now in, in 2022 and going forward? It's, 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 we could spend hours and hours trying to come to grips with millennials and how they think and the social media and the, the games that people spend hours and hours playing games. Uh, it, it's, it's a whole new world. I don't particularly understand it very well, I'm afraid. Uh, but if we're going to be cross, you know, inter if we're going to be intergenerational, we'll need to be making some leaps of trying to understand and come to grips with the way younger people think, whether, whatever age they're at, and try to understand, listen a lot. Uh, if you can get them talking, that's always a bit of a challenge sometimes. But it's important in this battle for this to, to realize that there is a spiritual realm that's beyond what we can see. And that's what's hard for people who are bound to this world, job, health, and, and you know, cost of living and, and so on. We, housing, so many issues that the government faces in these areas because everybody's focused back in when a war comes, it's a different story. We're focused on the soldiers who are out there fighting for our freedom. But when, it's, when things are mostly pretty good and, and there's a fair bit of affluence around, that's, that's what I want. That, I, that, that'll make me satisfied, won't it? So to understand very clearly that there are the two kingdoms, I'm sure I'm in the kingdom of God, I'm sure most of you believe you're in the kingdom of God. Well, how does that happen when the rubber hits the road and your relationships with people? We're having a Christmas in July with uh, another couple of couples tomorrow. How will God open up ways in that context of building this friendship, building opportunities to, to, to perhaps, uh, who, who will ask, will anybody ask the question, what is Christmas? Yeah, we, we don't know yet how that will work out, but we want to be ready and available in that particular context of where people live. The battle for truth and obedience. If truth doesn't have obedience, you don't believe it. That's, that's the bottom line, isn't it? If, if you, uh, when, you have, when you know it's truth and you want to live that out, you will want to change your talking and your behaviour and how you relate to people, the, how God's grace and God's love and, and it, it's, I, I wanted to mention when I was preparing this, nowhere does Jesus say, I love these people. It all sounds pretty judgmental and putting people in, in different boxes to what they expected that they were to be in. So it's, it's not easy. But how, how do you break through a, a, an enslavement? It's always hard, any enslavement. How can you tell a person that they're free? They've been ens enslaved in, in and, and Jesus talks about being enslaved to sin. And one of the most deadly areas of enslavement, religion. Because it's about, it's about God, it's about serious stuff and yeah, this is what the Jews thought. They, they were enslaved to this tick in the boxes of, yeah, I'm Ab Abraham's our dad and, uh, and we, we try to keep the commandments. I, I can't reach the level of the Pharisees. They're high, up, high here. They're up here in their, their level of, of obeying the law. They do the sacrifices. They, but we try to. So people are struggling with this whole thing of truth and obedience as to how to live it out. Until Jesus drops this huge clangor, huge. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. I came from God and now I'm here. I haven't come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? because you're unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. Yikes. Which of these Jewish people are going to say, yep, yep, that's fine, yeah, we are. No way. They, they, who, who does Jesus think he is? To say, our dad's the devil, the liar. 
the, the, the shocker person behind all the evil that we look, or, that we see around us in the world. And it's, it, it's just a, a shocking thing that Jesus would, would state this. And then, of course, the best defence, we always, we always know, don't we? Best defence is attack. So they try to protest. No, we, we're not kids of the devil. No, no, Abraham's our father. We're going to stick to that line. We, we think that's, that's what really works. That's going to be okay. But you're, you the, you, then, then Jesus has got to be wrong. So that's when they, they introduce, you, you're, a, you're, a, you're demon-possessed. That's the way they try to attack him back. You're demon possessed, but you know, we're fine. We're with Abraham. They, they come and stick to that, that line. And that's where Jesus says to them, how about me? What about, can you see any sin in my life? Can you, that's, you know, where, where my rubber hits the road. Can you see that I've done really bad things and evil things and hurtful things and tried to destroy it? make people all fragmented and going in all sorts of directions. Now the whole thrust of the Gospels is that the shepherd, which you'll hear more about later, goes out looking for the lost sheep. And we sang about that a bit earlier. He's looking for the lost. He'll come to the lost. And that's the incredible truth that we know we can trust Jesus because he is sinless. How he did it, it's just daily with the Father, constantly relating, knowing, understanding. Dad, what's, what do you want for me today? He would come every day asking his Father in heaven to, to guide him and lead him in what he said, what he did, what is truth, what's lies, what's obedience, what's disobedience. Jesus was relying constantly as a human being on his Father. But to the Jewish people, of course, it was a horror journey they were on, trying to defend themselves and, and, and you know, not, uh, not cover this whole... Uh, the only way they knew was to attack. You, you say... You, you say you, you, and that's when Jesus introduces what we started with before Abraham was, I am... And he was thrilled, looking forward to the day. Abraham was thrilled, looking forward to it. It's going to be great. And, and they, they looked at Jesus and said, you're crazy. That's why they thought he was a demon. You, you're crazy. You, 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 how old are you? Oh, you're no, more than, you're no more than 50. So, you know, Abraham died. Prophets all died. What, what? We're going to die, you'll die. And Jesus said, no, it's not quite the way it is. And so we need to come to terms with us in our own experience, our own life, of how has the rubber hit the road in, in my life, in how we're looking in the, as a church in intergenerational ministry, is it gaining traction? What, what can I be aware of and begin to, to seek to invest as a fellow traveller for kids, for teenagers, for young adults? We want to build this sense that, that we talk to each other, uh, that we relate as much as we can to value the other person. And people in the church growing through these years, they need it as much as, as any of us do, that we are children of God and that we, we are conscious of the truth. We know what it is we believe. We know why we believe it. People come to Christ. Eyewitness events of, of all through the gospel, um, Matthew, Mark and John, they saw these words of Jesus coming to life as people were healed and changed and given a whole new direction in their lives. So we, and of course, the beautiful stories when Jesus welcomed children, when children were just, you know, he put them, put them out the way. You, some of us grew up in the household, children always silent. That was okay for me, I'm an introvert. 
I wasn't too worried about that. But that that's whole idea has completely changed now anyway in society, and so it should. Uh, and, and encouraging children to, what, what, what are their doubts about this Bible stuff or coming to Jesus? What's that, what does that mean? What, yeah, how do I do that? Or what, what's, yeah. So why, why can we, or what, what, why do we believe what we do? So important that we listen with grace and humility. We could list a huge number of things in our world today that are people are their security, their comfort has just been shaken and, and you know really tested to the limit. And we just want to get back to normal. Long COVID, forget it. Monkey pox, is that what they call it? Is spreading wildly. Then the threat for our farmers for foot and mouth. And 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 you can see wellness going down the drain. Just being washed down the drain. When we think of the, and often there's, because, because they don't look to God, then you've got to have a God somewhere. So either it's yourself or it's a, maybe your favourite politician or your favourite somebody that might help in this in insecure, uncertain world that we're so familiar with now because the information just piles in constantly. What are we going to do about it? Jesus' story is a story of, of these ebbs and flows of, of truth and of lies and protests. And you see plenty of protests in Sri Lanka and whatever. People are protesting about something somewhere because they, they think government or somebody will have an answer. <coughs> we can be praying for our government leaders, but the Bible asks us to do is that they do their very best. But they're only people. They're not going to solve every problem that we've got. They, they can't allay everybody's fears of insecurity. Um, so we need to be constantly alert that maybe, just very, let's start thinking that people are asking spiritual questions now. What does life mean? Uh, where am I going when I die? What? So it might be running around and we're listening. We'll be listening tomorrow with these friends. Are they saying things that, that could be related to them looking and coming to Jesus for security long term? So we are alert and aware of these things. I don't know, sometimes passing on Jesus to the next generation. Yeah, great task for parents today, huge. A lot harder than what we had it. And it, you need a lot of prayer and guidance and wisdom and love to keep helping to transfer children's attention to the parents and hopefully obey, obeying the parents to listening to God. Constantly we would tell our children um, you, they're going to a camp or they're, they're going to hear some speaker. Listen to God to speak to you when you're there. Sunday morning, Jan was really great at this. Sunday, best day of the week. We go to church. We meet with friends. We have fun. We have a good time. And uh, how you can pass that on to your kids now, I, that's, that's up to you. But it's having a mindset that says, let's, re let's leave a legacy that really matters that will last and make a big difference to families down through the, the ages. What, whatever difficulties or, or situations, oh, we, yesterday we were talking with some, some of our relatives from somewhere uh, and uh, these, uh, a couple had come to, to this, this lady who's a financial advisor and this, that they wanted help with their finances. The husband very controlling with the finances and uh, 
when this another family that they knew was in great need and the financial advisors, it would be great, you know, for you to use some of your money to help them. And the husband says, no, no, won't do that. Anyway, the conversation sort of just went on a little bit from that about their financial situation and recommendations of what they do with their finances until they came to the say, well, th th then the husband just says, so, well, you'll take us on then, won't you? You'll help us with our finances. And she says, no, you've got a whole different value system to me. I can't give you financial advice. You, you didn't listen to me with my other suggestion of, of what you do with your money. So I, I can't help you. What a choice. Here was a, a, a perfect person, people who would, who would be pouring more money as, you know, into, into the, her business of financial advice. But because of spiritual principles, she said, no. What are we doing with our money, with our time, with, a, with our energies, to express that our, our, our kingdom life is being demonstrated day after day after day? Let's seek to do that. Pray for families within the church, families beyond the church. Wherever, if, if, you, if your list gets too long, so reduce it down and, and just, and then when you come to see them on Sunday or whatever, you can say, praying for you uh, this week. And just be available, be ready to listen as God leads. Has the rubber hit the road? Is it gaining traction? Father, I pray that we will be asking these questions of ourselves as we seek to listen to you as to who to pray for, whether they're in the church or a family member, live somewhere else. Uh, we want to pass on a legacy of faith and hope and security that lasts way into eternity. What a beautiful concept. Your kingdom, your rule and reign is coming. And uh, we pray that we'll be sensitive and alert to every opportunity that you give us. Thank you for the privilege that we can partner with you as your Holy Spirit fills us and gives us a huge passion for whoever we're talking to, who, whoever we're developing a friendship with that we would love to see them know Jesus and follow him because that's, what is, that's where there's true freedom, beauty, just unity of heart and life. Yeah, we bless you for all that you've done in our lives already and long for more in Jesus' name. Amen. Song time. So enjoy worship as we come to a close and continue worshipping as you have morning tea. That's all part of worship. Your body will be out there having a cup of tea. So you've invited your body to Christ, so serve and love him in that way. Thank you, Ed. key thing that I got from that was, was just about has he got your whole heart that really struck me today don't know what it was Ed but thank you for your message Like the words that you say have different messages and different things for different people, all our lives are in different places and there's something in there that you have for everyone here today so thank you for being faithful to bring God's word to our lives today take it with us today we're going to stand and sing Good, Good Father because he is a good, good father.
Thank you.